our latest release, Mountain Lion, is the ninth of our big cat named releases in just over a decade. As we turn our attention now toward the 10th, we've hit a real issue. We do not want to be the first software in history to be delayed due to a dwindling supply of cats. Okay, maybe not. That could be a bit of a dead end. So, <laughs> In fact, we're really excited about the future of the Mac, and we want a set of names that are going to carry us for at least the next 10 years. And you know, the answer really was really obvious to us. It's those places that inspire us here in California, in the place where OS X is designed and built. So for our first California-themed release, we went just outside our backyard, just off the coast, to a place with some of the biggest waves and most extreme surfing in all of North America, OS X Mavericks, starting with Finder tabs. Sounds like you guys know how this is gonna work. You, of course, can work in the Finder with multiple windows. It's a very powerful tool. But now you can draw all those windows together in tabs. And each tab can have its own location, its own view mode. It's really powerful, too. You can actually drag contents and hover across tabs. And of course, now that we have tabs in the Finder, it's also a great app to take full screen. Next, tagging. Next, <laughs> multiple displays. The Mac, of course, we're not giving you all the free multiple display here. This is a <laughs> software. So uh, with multiple displays in the Mac, it's always been a powerful way to spread out your work. But now, in Mavericks, you can get at your menus across multiple displays. You can summon your dock across multiple displays. And when you take a window full screen on one display, it doesn't mess with your desktop on the other display. And I really love this, when you pan your spaces, you can do it independently on each of your displays. Finally, if you have an AirPlay connected HD TV, it acts as a full power separate display as well. Next, I'd like to talk about some advanced technologies. And in Mavericks, we've introduced a whole host of technologies to address that challenge. Things like compressed memory that make sure you have memory available very quickly when apps demand it. Technologies like AppNap that actually make sure we're directing power only to those applications where you're really benefiting from it. System-wide core animation accelerated scrolling and OpenGL 4 for super responsive graphics. And a topic I want to go into in a bit more detail now, time coalescing. What you'll see as you look under the hood is not a smooth line, but actually hundreds of interrupts occurring per second where the system is going from a power efficient sleep state up to a state of uh, high power use and back down. And all of those transitions actually consume a lot of power. Well, in Mavericks, we intelligently align all of that work, reducing those number of transitions. This, in combination with technologies like AppNap and other power optimizations, reduce CPU utilization activity for these kinds of scenarios up to 72%. It's pretty awesome. Next, let's talk about compressed memory. When you look at your app runtime, all your memory isn't active. In fact, a subset of your memory is actively being used, and others is memory we have to keep around but isn't being used by the app. Well, now if you open a document, your system is going to need to get free memory, and it does that in the past by writing those inactive bits of memory out to disk, and that's a slow process. Now. With compressed memory, we're able to rapidly compress the inactive memory, making free space available almost instantaneously to the application. This can have great effects on responsiveness of systems under load. You see 1.4x kinds of improvements, even on fast SSD systems for activities like opening new documents or reactivating an application, and up to 1.5x improvement for waking a system from standby. Next, let's talk about Safari. These are the kinds of innovations that Safari has brought. Private browsing, blocking of third-party cookies for privacy, making the web easier to read with features like Reading List, and the HTML5 audio and video tag, all Safari firsts. We have a great, clean new home page with top sites. From there, you can get at a great sidebar where you have access to all of your bookmarks, and you can browse right from your bookmarks. And in that sidebar, we also have Reading List, where now you can continuously scroll through your articles, moving from article to article without ever having to click. Big improvements to JavaScript, a full process per tab architecture, and memory efficiency improvements with shared memory resource cache, and a whole bunch of big power savings as well. When you look at the effects of these changes, it's pretty profound. If you take a synthetic benchmark, 
like Sun Spider, you see how Safari fares against the competition. But you know, researchers have started to look at more real world JavaScript by sampling the JavaScript that actually occurs on sites like the Google homepage, Facebook, Amazon.com. And when you look at Safari's performance on a benchmark like that, JS Bench, the results are really incredible. Safari is also awesome when it comes now to memory usage, using way less memory than the other browsers, which means more memory for you to browse with more tabs and do more on your system. And when it comes to energy use, it's not even close. Safari uses way less energy than Chrome, and when you compare to Firefox, it's just kind of sad. So we have some more improvements that I think are gonna really help you with your browsing, and one of them is iCloud Keychain. Next, some improvements to notifications. We also handle a new kind of notification. So if you have an app today that sends push notifications to iOS devices, well now you can sign up to receive those push notifications on your Mac as well, whether Safari is running or not. In Mavericks, when your machine is sleeping, when you wake it up, It'll tell you everything that you missed while you're away right on the lock screen. It'll now update apps for you right in the background so you don't have to do it yourself. Next up, calendar. Let's take a look. Absolutely no virtual cows were harmed in the making of this user interface. We're gonna be adding that one to our environmental checklist, trust me. Next, maps. The maps team has been making great improvements to the data and maps and Mac users are gonna benefit because we have this fantastic new maps app of course, with your street maps, you have your 3D, beautiful flyover data, search for points of interest, great info cards, you can get turn-by-turn -turn directions, and my favorite part, when I have a route that I've set up on my Mac, and now it's time to go, just click right up here and send it right to my iPhone, where it'll appear right on my lock screen. And when I unlock my phone, it takes me straight into navigation. Super cool. Finally, we're bringing iBooks to the Mac. For those of you developers, we have a preview available for you today. And for everyone else in the general public, you'll be getting the final release this fall. And so in the last, for the last several years, we've been on a mission. We've re-engineered our development process so we can put out regular major releases that renew your Mac all the time. And we've reinvent, reinvented the way we distribute OS X. So now upgrading your OS is as easy as downloading an app from the Mac App Store. But today, we're going to revolutionize pricing because the days of spending hundreds of dollars to get the most out of your computer are gone. Today, we announce a new era for the Mac because today we're announcing that Mavericks is free. Free is good. So whether you have a Mac Mini introduced in 2009 or even an iMac introduced way back in 2007, you're entitled to Mavericks. And the best part, it's available today. Go out and get it. That makes over 50% of our install base working on our latest operating system. This is the fastest adoption ever of any PC operating system in history. Now, you may wonder how that compares to Windows. I knew somebody was gonna ask, so I decided to make a chart. <laughs> well, as it turns out, Windows 8 shipped about a year before Mavericks, and it's at 14%. <laughs> Need I say more? When we narrowly averted a major OS X naming crisis, starting, of course, with OS X Mavericks. Well, it's another year and time for another name. Now, they first ventured south, discovering OS X Oxnard. Now, this wasn't quite right, but undeterred, they headed east, landing at OS X Rancho Cucamonga. They boldly ventured north, landing at OS X Wii, and they set off on what then was a somewhat more circuitous path <laughs> that took them ultimately to a place that embodies the beauty and power of OS X, we discovered OS X Yosemite. Now, Yosemite is a fantastic new release with a new interface, big enhancements to our most popular apps, and something all new we call 
continuity. Now I want to start with design. OS X, of course, started with the bold design of Aqua. And over the years, it's evolved to the refined look we all love today in Mavericks. And I'd like to give you a look at where we're headed. And check out that trash can. That is a gorgeous <laughs> trash can. You wouldn't believe how much time we spent crafting a trash can. Next, let's talk about Notification Center. Now, Notification Center on OS X, of course, adopts the dark, translucent material and precise type of Yosemite. It also now, most importantly, has a new today view. So you get an at-a-glance look at your calendar, your reminders, weather, and more. So Spotlight has always been a super fast way to launch applications and find content local on your Mac. And Yosemite it is a great new interface. So when you click on the magnifying glass up in the toolbar, you get a big field right in the middle of the display. And if you just type a few characters, you can launch an app just like that. Or type the name of a document, and you get great search results and an inline preview. It's really awesome. Now, in addition to these sources local to your Mac, we also tap into sources of information on the internet. So next, iCloud Drive. We all know that documents in the cloud provided, uh, provides a really convenient way for working with an app that works across all platforms, working on that same document. But now, with iCloud Drive, your Mac, in addition to let you work on those within the document, has all of those folders right accessible inside of Finder. And in addition to those apps that are local to your Mac, you can get it content from apps that you don't have on your Mac, so get it contents from iOS documents. But even better, you can store all of your own files of any sort and organize them however you wish with folders and tags, and they're synchronized automatically across all your Macs. And all of this content is also accessible from your iOS devices via the iCloud document picker right in app. Next up, mail. So mail and Yosemite has an elegant new Yosemite style UI, but we really focused on the basics. Reliable syncing, fast switching between mailboxes, quick fetches of your new mail, the basics. Next up, Safari. We've, in Yosemite, been able to pack all the power of the Safari UI into this single bar. And that means you have more space for your content. Safari is great when it comes to standards. When it comes to multi-tab browser energy efficiency, Safari is without equal. And when it comes to the kind of UI manipulations that are typical in web apps, Safari is faster than ever. And when it comes to typical website JavaScript, Safari is in a league of its own. <laughs> Next, something entirely different. It's called continuity. So now at Apple, we believe you should be able to use the right device for the moment. Maybe your phone when you're on the go, your iPad when you want to kick back on the couch, or maybe your Mac when you're trying to get some work done. But we also want the transitions between these moments to be absolutely as natural and seamless as possible. Now, our continuity features start with something simple, and that's AirDrop, because now AirDrop works between iOS and the Mac. But now we have something where we really take it to the next level, and it's called handoff. It turns out now that when you're working on your Mac, your devices around you in proximity are aware of each other and are aware of what you're up to. And so if you want to pick up where you left off on your Mac, on your iPad, well, your iPad is prompting you right in the lower left of the screen. Just swipe up and you can pick up working on what you're working on your Mac right on your iPad. Now, this works in the other direction as well. So let's say you're composing an email on your phone and you walk up to your Mac, well, your Mac will notice what you're doing and prompt you right on the dock. You click it and you can pick up finishing that message right on your Mac. Now, 
We've been able to take this same proximity awareness and make the process of creating a hotspot easier than ever before. So now, if you're using your Mac and you're away from a network, but your phone is nearby, when you go up to your Wi-Fi menu, your Mac, actually without any configuration ever having been done on your phone, sees your phone and prompts you, so you click it, and it automatically sets up a hotspot. You never type a password, and you're on the network that easily. And, and this works even if your phone is across the room sitting in a handbag. You just never have to touch it. The next area we really wanted to handle was SMS. But then we have these green bubble friends. You know, they have inferior devices, <laughs> and they insist on sending us messages, and we don't want to hold it against them. But the problem is that those messages don't show up on our other devices until now. Your phone is able to act as a relay to automatically and transparently send your messages between devices. Now, believe it or not, we're able to do the same thing with phone calls. When you receive a phone call, your Mac gives you caller ID. And you can even accept the call and use your Mac as a speakerphone. And believe it or not, this works even if your phone is across the house in a charger. You never have to miss a call. So Yosemite, a beautiful new design with notification center with the new Today View and customizable widgets, spotlight with fast search and access to all kinds of great sources of information on the internet, a new iCloud drive, mail with great new features, Safari faster and more elegant than ever, and of course, continuity. It's a wonderful new release, Yosemite and it's available to you developers here today. Now everyone else will get it in the fall and believe it or not, it will be free. Now we're doing something a little unusual this summer as well, which is we're having a public beta program. So if you're a non-developer and you wanna help us improve Yosemite, you can sign up on the web and you could receive access to Yosemite betas throughout the summer. That is OS 10 Yosemite. I think you're gonna love it. I'm going to hand it back to Tim. Thank you. Uh -oh.